I'll just I'll just let it roll and this is the new coral it. row going in. Wow. So we got the stands in place the other day. These were the old uh, Canada coral tanks. Oh but yeah, were, I remember they were, them. They were built totally wrong, right? Wow. So the sumps were too high, and then you had no access to be able to put anything underneath. Yeah. So we cut them all out, uh, took the legs out that were underneath here. So now it's open. The sumps can sit on the ground. Yep. We uh, drilled this tank, so we drilled halfway in from one side wow. and halfway in from the other side, so that the drill is perfect, so there's no chips in it. And is there going to be a sump going in there? There'll be another sump here. So this, there's this sump as the last sump, then there'll be sump under every tank. So we have to have holes in either side. So we just got that tank down, and that's going to be the next sump to go in here. Wow. And then those two tanks will be the sump for the third system. Yes. Uh, so one will be Chato, and one will be Calerpa. Right now they're being used for coral bits. That is incredible. And this is, this is it. That's a lot of radians there, right? Eh? I, I, I think we have two, maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> that is gorgeous. We got some on the mangrove tank over here too, with all our uh, yields, right? Yeah. Nice. Flashlight fish are hiding out under the cave. Maybe in a little cave. Where's the? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's the shrimp fish, yeah. and then all the eel across the front there. You see that little bit poking up? Yep. I'm um, going to, wow, just a little preview, at some point we're going to do a proper video to document all of this, but I just can't resist saying hi to all that eye candy, holy smokes. Which ones? Oh yeah, let's take a look. Wow, so I like how everything is organized. That's the orchids from biting. They don't bite each other. They don't take chunks out of each other. The cups get changed daily so they stay nice and clean. And then they go through uh, bleach for a day and then acid for a day, make sure they're perfect, clean, neutralized, and back in. The yellow striped bunnies tend not to bite. The orchids do, though. That's incredible. In fact, you can see two orchids that escape their cups. Yeah. There's only two in an eight foot tank, and <laughs> they're fighting. Actually, there's a couple actually that I got away from. Now, would they fight with the Royal Grammar? Like one orchid with a Royal Grammar? It's very subjective. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Wow. And now let's take a look at a Chicago sunburst anemone. Heavy with inverts, like sexy shrimp, anemone shrimp, things like this. Wow. So I wasn't sure how many, um, how many clowns I wanted to put in there. Just because I kind of would prefer to have a lot of little inverts in there. So how, go try one and how one. much would one uh, retail for? Like uh, if somebody goes to the store and picks it up. I'm not sure. That's a great question. Uh, the only the only Chicago sunbursts I've seen in Canada were like fake ones. <laughs> so they were selling for quite cheap yeah. compared to what they should be. Well, the, the where they just, where they're just amazing. taking a flame tip and yeah. bake the flame tip so that it looks primarily yellow. Yeah. But it doesn't have like it's not that pure yellow you can still see the orange in it yes right uh, or, or you or you bake it and uh <laughs> and then it, and then you you can't see the yellow or you can't see the orange for a short time and as soon as it drops in color like these did come in and they were orange right right and it's only been a week and now they're beautiful and yellow again so that's at least that's amazing but that's a, that's a pretty much a true yellow as, as far as yeah, it's not quite as much as the Colorado, but it's, yeah. you know, and I'm sure it'll get more yellow. It's only been a week. Uh, and the other one is the Nexus, right? So yeah, Nexus 50-50. Get a little something in there. Just water thing down a bit. See yeah. Let's see if we can. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's wow. That is gorgeous stuff right there, so. And so, how much the Nexus would retail for, roughly? Let's check real quick. Sure. I'm turning into a vlogger now. Well, it's fun, right? It, it is fun. So listen, I'm a kid in a candy store. Look at that. That is wild. Like, I don't think I've seen that type of yellow before, ever. Yeah. I've seen, you know, a green with orange. This and that. But 
That's that is very nice. It need, just needs a couple of like really special clowns. That's amazing. So the hard part with the Nexus is just that um, it depends how they're split. Are they 50-50? 75, 25, like what ratio of, of orange to green are they? Are the, are the tentacles split like that? Yeah. Because they can go for, you know, quite a bit less when they're like 25%. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. If they're if they're true 50, 50 like that, then you know those are the most valuable. That is incredible. And what are the mushrooms that you've got there? I see them. Some little Aiken rainbow, and rainbow recordias. Yeah. And a little uh, Aussie Aiken in there. Sweet. So what was the price for Nexus? Mm, I can't even find it right now. Won't, won't, no. We'll see, we'll see when we have them available, though. It's one of those things, if you ask, you can't afford it? That's pretty well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They come to get it. So this is where the uh, pragmatic 3D stuff is... Uh, we got, a, we got the Ecotech service station uh, sneakily hiding behind it back here. What's uh Oh, so do you actually service the Ecotech yeah. stuff? Yeah, we really? Go all the parts and stuff. We go around here and then sort of look behind it. Whoa, look at that. So, you know, how do you know how to disassemble it and do all of that? Uh, we went down to Ecotech and they trained us on how to do it. Ah. So, with their, with their service team. We have their engineering software on this old PC that's sitting back here. Yeah. Uh, so we have the same engineering diagnostic software that they have for their service team. Gotcha. We typically have all the parts in stock, every nut, bolt, screw, uh, yeah. everything that's still in production. And then, so we've got all the different generations uh, over here. Uh -huh. We're changing over since the G5 came over. Right. We had everything in the parts drawers, but now with another generation, we needed the extra space. Ooh, I love it. Cause, so we come uh, over here, now we have all the G5 parts here, then we got G4, what's remaining of G3, and then what's remaining of G1 down there, and then ballasts, right. and then odds and ends. That's incredible. Very we're, helpful. We're getting there. Yeah? These ones I handpicked, uh, like from WYSIWYG photos. Right. I don't, know, I don't know that much about Chloe, in all honesty. These are ones that I thought looked pretty. So, uh, I think these ones give me attention to keeping them myself. I think you need the ones that, uh, ha like, have this spot that looks like a Japanese uh, flag uh, on the back. Those ones are <laughs> super popular. Holy smokes. You see them only the best of firing Yeah. Oh my goodness. The, uh... And normally there's a 3,000 gallon an hour pump on here for circulation fluid. Right. And then we've got like the bio tower that's going up and into the racking. So we've got a, a vector pumping up there. And they like to hide under that tub both for the shade and because it's super oxygenated under there. What about the temperature? Like, do you need to bring it up or bring it down? Uh, no. No, not for the depth one. Gotcha. Well, this is, uh, this is so gorgeous. We, we use the, you see the yellow line coming in right there? That's the waistline from our RO unit. Right. And then uh, a lot of the time we'll just sort of flush them with the uh, waistline from the RO. And it will just overflow into the whole thing. Oh, it's more I love Kui. I love Kui. And I think this is uh, some spectacular specimen. specimen. Yeah, these, these are the ones I really was planning on keeping for myself. And I said, well, if they don't sell, I'll keep them. But uh, I'd like to get a buyer. Yeah. Oh, and this is where they hide kind of. Yeah, they love it under there. They like the shade and then very oxygen right? Yes, yeah. yes. That's gorgeous. Oh, they're very healthy. Very, very healthy. Here's a quick look at the tank in the evening. Fish are always hungry, always wanting to eat something. Visors are looking good. And I think the tank is preparing to go to sleep. You may notice that there's no rasses here other than the cleaner ras. Um, the yellow ras as well as uh, the leopard ras are sleeping. Oh. The moment I said that, here is the Melanurus ras, and I think I just noticed uh, 
the leopard rest in the back. So here's a quick look at the tank in the morning. So the lights haven't come on, there's no bright sunlight. Fish are always hungry. And this does look like a reef to me. Now let's take a look at the sump. Because uh, in the sump here I actually have made a big difference, a big change lately, which is um, taking all of that Cheeto out kind of got really, really messy. Uh, there was a lot of uh, other microalgae growing in there. And I figured that, oops, focus on that. So I figured that I needed something a little bit uh, cleaner. So I took everything out, removed all the microalgae and only left a little piece of uh, Cheeto here, which I've actually cleaned strain by strain. So this little probably fist size piece is um, it took me about half an hour to produce where I've just been plucking the strain of Chitomorpha from a five gallon container and one by one I put together this little box. Now check out also a little few 3D printed goodies here that I've I'll put together. One is, let me just turn on the light. So obviously I've got the visors on the hydro as well. But also in the back here, I'm going to focus on it here. You can see there's a little connector that I've put together um, to run the line. I think it's a one centimeter diameter line uh, that goes into the water. So basically, I've got that going and the water overflows into this container here and it seems to be doing quite well here. So let's, uh, let's take another look at what's going on over here. I've got one shrimp living in this uh, section and I haven't really yet figure out what else I want to do here but uh, if you have some suggestions on what can go into this section maybe it's going to be a, a more live rock maybe I tried with a frag tank but that was not a very good idea and you can actually see the little shrimp right here this is just the peppermint shrimp so that's a quick view of my sump this morning. So here's a shot of the tank in the afternoon. So this is late afternoon and you can see this is what both my color spectrum and just overall tank looks like around 6 p.m. on a regular day. Fish are still very very hungry.